What's up everybody? It's Mark again and welcome back to Swamp and Stomp. Today we're going to be talking about scrape drippers. You know the little things you hang up above a scrape and you put urine in them and then they drip into the scrape and keep the scent of urine around for a longer period of time. They're expensive. I don't like to pay for expensive things so I decided to come up with a really cheap way to make your own and these are going to cost you about 75 cents to a dollar. So uh, it's going to save you money so stay tuned for that. A big deer. And he didn't even go 30 yards. Oh my god. <laughs> that was the first buck I've ever shot. Woo! What a rush. Money. That deer is dead. Tagged out, baby. <laughs> you shot one? Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. I saw him go what? down. All right guys, welcome back. So, um, like I said, today we're gonna be talking about scrape drippers, but before we get into that, I have a few announcements that I wanna make. Uh, first of all, we have a few events coming up in the near future, and we would love to see you guys at those events. In June, no, sorry, July, we are doing, um, together with Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, this is gonna be the third annual scouting workshop, um, and deer season kickoff party so basically we meet up and usually a whole bunch of people show up to this we pair you up with um you know a group of people that want to learn and a few um, experienced florida hunters that want to teach um, we had ray martin um the guys from uh, uh florida camo um just i can't even think of the names right now but a whole bunch of uh, great hunters came and basically took people into the woods and showed them what to look for on Florida ground, especially South Florida ground, what kind of sign you're looking for, how to tell the difference between fresh and old sign, um, how to set up on sign, where to put cameras, all that stuff. Any questions that you have about figuring out the woods, um, this is gonna be a great opportunity for you to ask those questions to experienced hunters. And then after we come out of the woods, um, we will have a hog, a whole hog roasting, um, uh, probably gonna be either barbecue or Cuban style, we don't really know. There's gonna be a whole bunch of food um, and you can come hang out, talk with uh, local hunters, um, you know, maybe make a few new hunting friends. It's always been a great event, so hopefully we'll see you guys at that one. And I feel like I'm forgetting one more event, but you can find all of our events on our Facebook page in the events section. And if you wanna buy any of our camo, our merch, whatever, go to our website. It's gonna be swampandstompllc.com. And if you want to save yourself a little bit of money, you can use the code SNS10 to get 10% off on wood hunting saddles. You can either buy them on our website or on their website. And then you can also get like $20 off on a JX3 hybrid by using the code SNS22. All this information is down in the description. So check it out if you want to save yourself some money. And let's get into these scrape drippers. All right, as promised, we're actually going to talk about scrape drippers today. So, um, the backstory here is pretty simple. I wanted to try this out before I showed it to you guys, but um, there's a whole bunch of different ones on the market. You know, you can get this one, that one, this one. I mean, there's so many different ones, but the theme among all of them is one, they're kind of big. They take up a bunch of space in your pack um, and they're expensive, whether they're, you know, 11 or $12 for the cheaper ones, um, up to like $25, $30. There's even some that are like $40, $50 where you can like adjust the drip rate and stuff, which doesn't actually work. Um, but the problem is when you spend, if you wanna, let's say you wanna hang up like five cameras over scrapes and you have a bunch of these things, um, you go out there, someone else finds the scrapes and suddenly your dripper is gone because they stole it. So I wish I could show you some of these. I had to show you those pictures because I used to have some and they all got stolen. So I don't have any to show you. Um, so I wanted to come up with a way to put drippers out that were cheap so that if people steal them, I don't care. So I tried a few different containers um, and they weren't really working until I found the one that I finally settled on and uh, I'll give you a hint, it's 
it costs about 75 cents to a dollar per dripper um, and I'm gonna show you that in a second but before I show you that I want to just kind of teach you how these uh, drippers work and basically why some of the other containers that I tried didn't work so if you decide to do it your own way then you're not using the container that I used um, you kind of understand the physics in it so here is a little animation that I made so in order to understand how to make a DIY urine scent dripper for um, for deer hunting you need to kind of understand how the physics of one of these things work now a lot of people think that it's as simple as you fill it up with fluid you flip it upside down and it'll just continually drip but that's actually not the case because if you were to do that or if it, if it were to do that it would basically run out of fluid incredibly quickly um, so the way it actually works um, is, is a little bit different there's some physics involved so I'm gonna explain it um, it's quite simple really so here we have um, some PP um, in a container and I want you to notice that this container does not have any openings at the top it only has the opening at the bottom um, and this is important you want it to be sealed on all sides except for the opening where you want it to drip out of another thing that is important is you'll notice that the opening to this has a nozzle a long straw like nozzle um, and it's skinny that's important because um, fluid water has a surface tension it's going to want to stick to the inside of that nozzle and so that basically requires a certain amount of pressure to be built up to push the fluid through that if you were to just have uh, for instance a bottle um, and you just drilled a small hole in the lid um, and hung it upside down what would end up happening is that uh, there's not enough surface tension to prevent that fluid from continuing to drip out of there and it would just continue to drip constantly and it would basically be empty in no time at all the way that this works makes it uh, last for a few days so I'm going to show you kind of how that works but it's important for you to understand the way that the container is set up um, and I will show you a container that works really well but you might think of your own as well so anyway you put your your urine into this container now you hang it upside down um, and so you have the pp on the bottom and you have air at the top um, then as the sun comes out and it starts to heat up the uh, fluid and the air inside of that container are going to start to heat up as well now as they heat they are going to want to expand that's just the way that physics works when you heat something up it actually tries to get a little bit larger certain substances will expand more than others air will expand more than fluid will which um, which is a little bit important uh, to understand how long this will last um, and I'll come back to that in a second but basically as you heat this up it starts to expand and this creates a pressure inside of the container now because there's pressure there's only one way that anything can leave and the fluid is blocking that entrance and so what happens is it starts to push that fluid out of the bottom and you start having drops of urine come out um, and this will continue to happen as it continues to heat up more and more um, eventually reaching its maximum expansion um, at which point it will stop dripping pee out of it then so you saw that the amount of pee in the container went down because um, that's that's because it dripped out of it during the daytime um, and now um, we are going to head into nighttime so the sun's going to set and um, the moon's going to come out and what's going to happen at nighttime because there's less light um, and those sun rays are no longer hitting that container the temperature is going to drop now as that temperature drops instead of having pressure we're going to start seeing a vacuum because the air and the fluid is going to start um, shrinking again because it's cooling down now again there's only one opening so as it shrinks um, and creates that vacuum it's going to suck air in through the only opening there is and it's gonna bubble up through that fluid and join the pocket of air that's inside of there 
Um, and then this process will continue as the sun rises and sets every single day, um, releasing a small amount of pee every time that that cycle occurs until there's nothing left. Now, I mentioned earlier that it's really important uh, that you understand well, I guess it's not really important, but it's a little bit important to understand that air expands more than P because what that means is that as this process continues and you get more and more air at the top of that container, it means it's actually going to release more fluid each day um, as this cycle continues. Um, and you might think that having a bigger bottle is going to allow you to uh, have the fluid last longer, but that is actually not the case uh, because it'll just release more fluid. Uh, the only way to make it last longer is for you to fill it up more with pee. So you can fill it all the way to the top um, and it will start, it'll release smaller amounts in the beginning and then continue to release more, which might be a good idea because in the beginning you can usually pour some pee in the scrape yourself so that scent's already going to be there so you don't need to add a whole lot but then as time goes by you might want more and more to come out so if you want it to last longer just put more pee in it it does not actually matter how big the container is all right so now you guys understand how these things work i'll show you what container i came up with this is it right here this is a brand new one what this is, it is a 60 milliliter or 60 cc syringe. Very simple. Um, and as I mentioned in that little animation, it is very important that you have this nozzle, a nice skinny nozzle um, to create that surface tension so that the fluid doesn't just drip out of it. So I thought a long, long and hard about what containers would work well for this. And I decided these were gonna do the trick. And uh, it's very simple. I mean, you can, uh, you can drill a hole up here or just I just take some paracord and tie it around like a loop and then just hang it um, and to fill it up very straightforward you just pop it open I just put my finger over the hole grab your urine pour it in and then you just kind of like push that in and like as you as you put it in you I kind of tip it back so that that fluid isn't against the hole because if it is when you push I like to push that in past the click and if, if you have it like this, then you'll push some of that, that fluid onto your hand. I don't personally really care that much. In fact, when I'm done and I have a little bit on my finger, I just <sighs> take a little bump, get me ready for season. But you know, you might be um, a little prissy about it. So you don't want PP on your hands. So that's how you avoid it. You just tip it back as you push it in and it won't squirt out on your hands. Anyway, so then you have urine inside of it and you just, simply hang it from the branch wherever you want it um, and it will function exactly the way that I just showed you in that animation um, and here I'm going to show you some pictures now um, of one that I set up where you can see it very clearly um, so here in the first picture you can see this is me hanging it up um, you can see how much urine I have in there I, I think I filled it up like halfway I'm not really not sure how much I put in there um, but uh, you'll see the sun starts rising a little bit. You'll start seeing that fluid go down just a little bit throughout the day. Um, and then we jump to the next day. And you'll notice from like from evening to daytime, it really doesn't lose any fluid. It's not until that sun starts rising again and heating it up that you start seeing that fluid drop down. Um, then by the second evening, uh, the first deer that shows up is a buck clearly very interested in that dripper and it's trying to get to that licking branch that you can see that's that's right above it um and this buck might look familiar because i actually took a shot at this buck and i missed and you can watch that video by clicking right up there um and for those of you that are up north thinking oh my god that deer is tiny uh yes the deer here in south florida are tiny that's actually a pretty nice buck um in fact some of these other bucks that came in that were smaller than that one i would have shot them too but i never actually saw them um, but anyway so um i'll keep flipping through these days um, and you can see that it loses incremental amounts of urine throughout the day and so it lasts about four days um, which is going to be basically the average that any one of these is going to last if you put a similar proportion of 
fluid inside of it. Now, like I mentioned, if you want them to last longer, all you have to do is add more fluid. So if you fill it all the way up, you're probably gonna get like seven or eight days out of it. Um, whereas if you put a little bit less, you might it might be done after like two. Um, but anyway, it's a really simple concept. It works incredibly well. And uh, yeah, it looks ridiculous hanging in a tree and you know, it, people might be able to spot it. But the nice thing is most people that spot it probably aren't gonna think, oh, that's a scrape dripper. I should steal that. They're gonna be like, why the hell is there a syringe hanging from a tree? And probably just walk right past it. And if they are like, ooh, I'm gonna steal that, it costs 75 cents. So who really cares? Anyway, it works really well. I'm sure that the industry that makes these expensive drippers isn't gonna like that I put this out, but I don't really care because they're not paying me. Um, in fact, nobody's paying me. Uh, that reminds me, if you guys wanna support the channel, you can join our Patreon group um, and we do a bunch of events for them. And next year, we're actually planning on really vamping up all the events that we do. So we're gonna have several hunts, including a deer hunt for the Patreons um, that you guys can join us on. Um, and uh, we would really appreciate it. Uh, so you can check that out at patreon.com slash swamp and stomp or click right there. Um, and with that, I don't think I have any more to add. If you guys have any questions about anything, uh, this video or anything else, uh, feel free to send us a message on Instagram, drop a comment down below, whatever you wanna do. Um, and please tell your friends about this channel. We really appreciate all of your support and we will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.